Alright folks, how are we doing? It's Shabash and welcome back to the channel, it's Orna again. And in this video we're guiding you through part 2 of our mage class progression in Orna, focusing on itemization and gearing options for tiers 1 to 10. If you haven't checked out part 1 already, where we covered classes, specs and pets, link in the description below. Remember in this video I'll be recommending items that are in the core game and are easily attainable at any point during the year. So obviously some limited event items are best in slot and we might mention a few if we come across them on the Orna guide, but the main goal still stands and we'll prioritize the core game items. If you'd prefer a written guide version we'll also post a link in the description to the Orna Legends website for easy picture references. Okay so let's light a fire under this and get started in the Orna guide. We're going to open up the item database filtered for tier 1 and mages and we're going to check out the weapon, the most important thing. And you start the game off with this mages staff, only 5 magic, you want to upgrade this as soon as possible. So if you see goblin mages, they can drop canes I think and shops as well, you can find a cane in the shop as well as a mana bow. So those are all upgrades, if you see a goblin lord, yeah, take it down if you can, might take you a few turns. However, the most important weapon at this tier is not a tier 1 weapon at all, it's a tier 2 weapon. Similar fashion to the warrior guide I suggested, you're going to want to kill fallen mages. They drop this fallen mages staff, it gives you 50 magic, it's the best, well, it's tied for the best weapon at uh, tier 2 and it's by far the best weapon at tier 1. You can see it's a tier 2 weapon, but it's dropped by a tier 1 monster. Fallen mage, you can see it's tier 1. So you will see these as soon as you start the game. Kill a few mobs. If you see one of these and it drops a quality Fallen Mage's staff, you're laughing all the way to tier 3 or 4. So this is by far the most important item at tier 1 and probably tier 2 as well. Going back to tier 1, let's check out accessories. Unfortunately, mages don't get very nice accessories. Unfortunately, there's nothing that improves your magic stat at tier 1. So to be honest, at tier 1, I guess the best option will be a Carl's Ring. If you can complete his quest, you find them. You at least get some HP and mana. Otherwise, just put whatever you find on an Iron Ring. Yeah, the defense is going to help you out actually at the start of the game. The decks from the belt and the leather belt is not too bad either. Yeah, mages we get shafted a little bit at the early game. You can see the amulet gives you attack. There's not an equivalent mage item for a couple of tiers. So let's talk about armor now. And again, in the early game, you're going to be going up levels super fast. You're going to be going through the tiers. I recommend just stick anything on that's an upgrade. Bandits, they drop fairly decent items. You get nice resistance. Again, if you find goblin lords, they drop technically the best items at this tier. The magician set of the, the hood and the robe. And I guess he drops the shoes as well even though it's not mentioned here, I can't confirm. So again, at these early levels, whatever you can find is likely going to be an upgrade, especially if it's quality, stick it on. Everyone loves a nice ornate dingy robe. And at tier 1, there's no offhand available for mages, so let's quickly move on to tier 2. So at tier 2, there's a couple of recommendations. Obviously the Fallen Mage staff from tier 1 continues on and if you get a nice one it will still last you for plenty of levels from here on. If you're traveling around you might see a few Draconian Lord bosses. They drop a fairly nice staff actually. It does also give view distance which is really nice. Might lead you to finding even more Draconian Lords to get a nicer quality one. You can see the magic stat is just a couple lower than the Fallen Mage stat. Yeah, Fallen Mage's staff and Draconian Archer staff are what we're looking for. Moving on to accessories. So at tier 2 actually we have a green gems which give plus 10 to magic at common quality. So And they drop from the evil eyes which are very common you should find a couple of these ideally you get a nice quality one i know the 10 magic doesn't seem a lot but if you get a couple of these 20 magic they're going to stack together and you're still going to have some nice scaling from your spells so you should feel a nice power increase with a couple of these green gems equipped another option from a draconian lord is the the amulet is quite nice you get a nice bit of hp and mana so if you find a good one again this will give you a decent wee bit of survivability and extra mana go with what you prefer i recommend these two items as your accessories for this tier okay armor wise we're going to start with the leg slot because there's a really nice pair of boots you can actually buy from shops that are these wading boots you can find these in shops really nice balance of defense and uh, resistance so this will probably be an immediate upgrade if you buy it straight away even at level one so if you're lucky you'll buy a few of these upgrade one to maybe level two or three in a couple of hours and this will give you a nice balance of defense and resistance for a chest piece you're likely going to find apprentice robes and draconian robes more common than the bear skin but if you're traveling around you might come across a nice bear skin and it does give you a pretty high defense stat which is going to be super nice in the early game but your most likely option is going to be this draconian robe from killing those nasty draconian mages and with the head slot again you're looking at these apprentice or draconian hood options whichever is the best one you find stick it on finally we do actually have an offhand available for mages at tier 2 best one being the scroll but is a drop from the arena at 6 magic the chances of you getting a good one are quite slim but an increase in magic is an increase in magic so i do recommend waiting until tier 3 before going into the arena because we actually get a nice selection of scrolls available to drop for us and there's actually four or five 
uh, with elemental properties as well, which are much better than this scroll. But it is there, it is available. So in summary, try and find some draconian lords to take down in the world. Uh, drop a nice staff, giving you view distance, and the amulet is not too bad. The fallen mage staff as well continues strong. And equipping some double green gems, you should see a nice power upgrade as well. Okay, so for your tier 3 weapon, there's a couple of options which are really nice. If you're already in the kingdom, you might be pumping Draken, and he drops a nice staff, gives you 77 magic as a base. Otherwise, you got Fallen Archie Staff, which drops from Fallen Archmages. This is like the upgraded Fallen Mages Staff. 77 magic as a base is really nice. If you're playing at night, you might come across a Wisp, which drops a really nice staff, actually. 68 magic, a bit lower, but you do get 40 HP, which is really helpful, especially in the arena. The reason I don't recommend this Ankh, which drops from the Lost Pharaoh boss, is it's an Axe and Hammer category, so you don't gain anything from the weapon proficiency bonus. Okay, it's only 5%, and at this level, you know, it's worth maybe... I don't know, 5, 10, 20 magic, which isn't a lot, but you likely get more juice out of a Draken Staff or Fallen Archie Staff and even a Greater Wisp Staff as well. Okay, so at Tier 3, we actually get a boost to magic with accessories via the Green Crystal, which is easily found from Gazers. You can buy them in shops and they drop from Mimics as well. So 25 magic, equipping two of these will boost your magic by 50, so that should make a noticeable impact on killing mobs. You might also want to pick up a couple of lanterns at this point for shops, increasing your view distance by 20%. If you've got a really nice weapon, you can stick a couple of these on, and if you're traveling around, etc., you can spot a few more bosses, a few more mobs. If you like mana efficiency, you can also find a blue crystal giving you 50 mana. That will allow you to take down quite a few more mobs before healing your mana. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, at tier 3, we now come across mage scrolls in the arena which have a base of 12 magic and okay yeah you have a basic one here but you also find these in the four basic elements again giving you 12 magic but they also cause the elemental status effect for example earth will cause rot fire will cause burning etc etc obviously the best one is going to be a scroll of ice or so equip a couple of green crystals use your unstable magic spells which you learn at this tier and you should find a decent scroll quite quickly just use whichever one you find. If you get multiple, you can upgrade one a few levels as well. For our headpiece, we get the most defensive stats from the Count's Hood, which is a really good item because it's dropped by multiple monsters. It should be very easy to find, especially if you're playing at night or in the woods. Quite a nice bump from the previous tiers in defense and resistance. And yes, the Dark Mage's Hood does give increased orns, but the increased amount is really negligible at this point in the game. I recommend going for increased survivability, and the Count's Hood is quite easy to find. If you're playing during the night, you might also find a nice Hood of Wolves, which again is, is fairly close to the Count's Hood, and it's a similar story with the chest piece as well, Count's Garment, really nice. Also, Robe of Wolves, again, from Grey Wolf Men. They're both quite similar stat-wise, so whichever is the best one you find. For legs, if you've been in the arena looking for your scroll, you'll likely find some nice Boots of Fire, which give you fire resistance, which is really nice, dropping any fire or damage received by 50% immediately. So in summary, armor-wise, the best items come during the night, actually. Vampires and Grey Wolfman for the Robe of Wolves, Count's Hood, even Boots of Wolves. We also get solid accessories in the form of the Green Crystal, a nice offhand from the arena. These will give you a really nice boost to your magic stat. And we're also looking to upgrade our weapon from the Fallen Archmages at Tier 3 as well. If you're in a kingdom, try and get a nice drop from Draken. That will set you up quite nicely for going into Tier 4. Okay, weapon-wise at Tier 4, there's a few items we can mention. First of all, if you're in a kingdom already, the Fomor Staff is probably the best item at this tier. 90 magic, scales well, prevents you from being burned, frozen, and paralyzed, which is really nice. Other options with the same magic stat, actually. If you're playing at night, you might find a dark staff from darkest demon or in the arena apparently so if you're not in a kingdom yet try and get one of these there's also the boreal staff available giving you the same magic and causing frozen but to complete that quest you need 50 water stone which is probably asking a bit much at this point in the game otherwise if you can find a lich it drops a fairly nice staff giving you extra magic as well but the main theme for mages seems to be play at night because you get a nice dark staff and uh, the yokai staff as well 86 magic not too bad either and actually causes res down which is seriously nice actually accessory wise we do not get a direct upgrade from the green crystal at tier 3 so the best overall accessories at tier 4 are definitely going to be trolls charms dropping from trolls you'll see plenty of them gives you a nice boost to a lot of your base stats and it will be easier for you to find a nicer quality version of trolls charms than the green crystals so definitely go around killing all the trolls you can find in our offhand there's another upgraded scroll available from the arena but it purely boosts your magic it doesn't have any second abilities it doesn't proc any status effects so it actually steer towards using a tier 3 version also if you find a nice bone shield from the undead golem boss the hp and defense is actually quite nice which might actually help you get through dungeons a bit smoother and for the head slot there's a couple of options which are fairly easy to come by you're likely going to find a nice fomorian hood actually from killing lots of fomorian mages or rogues so this will probably be your most common drop at this tier i personally prefer the fomorian hood at this tier 
It has high defense, it's very common, so you should find a nice quality one fairly easily, and the materials are very easy for you to upgrade it. At this point in the game, you want to start putting items into the blacksmith for four or five levels, especially if you've joined a kingdom and you want to start raiding, even boss dungeons going into tier five. For the chest slot, you're likely gonna find a Fomorian robe again, or an ancient robe from the Lich, and they're both quite solid pieces. The Fomorian robe complements the hood quite nicely, and again, is very common and easy to upgrade. However, if you get lucky and you find a Yeti, and he drops you a nice Yeti coat, this is by far the best armor at this tier. Prevents you from getting frozen, gives you water resistance, very high balanced defense and resistance, HP, usable by all classes, if you get a nice one it will last you for a long time but just bear in mind yetis are quite rare and in the leg slot mages have nice items dropping from the arena giving you the innate elemental resistance uh, boots of earth boots of the sea in a similar fashion to the boots of fire from tier 3 if you don't pick up a good one of those if you don't pick up a good one of those you can count on the Fomorian boots giving you nice defense setting you up again for raiding for some reason boots of the sea give more resistance than boots of the earth but the resistance will be quite nice going into tier 5 where we're going to start raiding star lord so in summary at tier 4 start killing those fomorian mages they'll give us some nice easily upgradable gear and you'll hopefully pick up a few legendary or, or ornate pieces liches as well give us some nice drops if you've already joined the kingdom get a nice fomor staff otherwise playing at night seems to be the best way to get a nice upgrade for your weapon and keep your eyes peeled for those trolls as well Okay, at tier 5 I'll start off by talking about the Adamantine Staff. It's very easily attainable. The Adamantine Knights are very common, so there's a good chance you'll pick up a nice one of these. Definitely smith one of these up, because it can be a nice backup to your Sun Staff or Gazing Staff, which I'll now talk about. You can also find Elven Staffs fairly easily if you're killing lots of mobs. The Gazing Staff is also very nice, it gives you the boss scaling and extra view distance as well. And the magic is quite high as well. But it's at this point in the game, tier 5, where you really want to join a kingdom that is running Star Lord quite regularly. The Sun Staff has 100. 30 base magic has the boss scaling upgrades very nicely talking about pure magic stat get one of these it will make your life better for accessories there's no direct upgrades to the green crystal or the trolls charm so those are still good recommendations you can also easily pick up gadget and gizmo from completing ingenious cades quest the gizmo will prevent you from having your magic dropped otherwise stay on the lookout during the year for things like the arch gadget arch gizmo these will prevent your stats from getting double dropped and even better you have the ring of day ring of night which also prevent temporary drops in your stats as well so you can see there's multiple events during the year where you would be able to pick one of these up in our head slot antlers are quite nice if you get a nice pair from the arena balanced defense and resistance quite a few slots for adornment as well however it's probably more likely you find a nice dark elf hood from killing the dark elf mages very common easily upgradable pretty solid stats i kind of recommend it over the sun hat because you want to save your solarite for your sun staff but the stats are obviously better on the sun hat so if you get a nice ornate go with whatever is best in our chest slot the dark elf robe is actually very nice giving you balanced defense and resistance plus a little bit of dexterity again should be quite easy to find and easy to upgrade the dark elf mage apparently doesn't drop any boots so i either recommend the sun boots from star lord or if you're in the arena a lot you might find a nice pair of battle mage boots don't go crazy in the upgrade because you want greater souls for for later items unless you're taking loads of names in the arena Finally at tier 5 we have another upgraded scroll available to us in the arena so I definitely recommend at this point getting in there because it gives you 24 magic which is solid, 80 mana as well which is going to be really nice, upgrade this a few levels, it takes runestone which is a very common material as well so, so I definitely recommend leveling one in the blacksmith to you know level 7, 8, 9. So in summary of tier 5 obviously if you've taken the druid class you're going to be able to wear warrior and thief gear as well but i've obviously just concentrated on magic gear definitely stick to the magic weapons the staffs and bear in mind if you're wearing warrior or thief gear you might not be able to wear it in the next tier which is obviously why i've recommended mage gear because we go druid straight away you get access to jen's talent or mimic's mischief so that should allow you to breeze through dungeons especially if you get a nice sun staff or a nice gazing staff get a sorcerer scroll some nice trolls charms and we can also use golem's fortitude which only drops the attack stat so you can start having fun in dungeons even boss dungeons and in the arena as well to pick up a nice sorcerer scroll. At tier 6, a couple of nice weapon options that actually increase our experience earned. Uh, Black Witch Staff from Carmen Boss is the first one. Carmen of the Underworld, which you will see in Dungeons and Gauntlets, drops the Witch's Arch Staff, which has higher magic as a base and also boosts our experience. So this is probably your best weapon at this stage. But yeah, only available in dungeons. And of course, the raid at tier 6 is Titan. So the Moon Staff is fairly nice, but a bit less magic actually than, uh, than the Witch's Arch Staff from Carmen of the Underworld. Quickly mentioning accessories at tier 6 we have an upgrade to our Trolls Charm that is in the form of the Ancient Trolls Charm which drops from Ancient Cyclops. Now this is a this is a mob it's not a boss but it only appears in gauntlets as well so you definitely want to be doing as many gauntlets and dungeons as you can at tier 6. Also recommend picking up a Blight Pendant 
This is useful against the Baylor Elite Raid at tier 7. Flight Pendant is available from the arena, along with some really nice boots as well. So these elemental boots are mage specific. Up until now you kind of had access to one or two of each element at each tier. But at tier 6 you get access to all four elements and they all have equal stats, 45 defense, 132 resistance. So not only are they the best in slot stat wise at this tier, they have the innate basic element resistance as well. So I would say pick up a pair of each element, keep it in your pocket. For raiding Titan, the terror boots are going to be your go to, a lot of his damage is earthen. And then even moving into tier 7, Again, Baylor Elite, the Infernal Boots are going to be really nice. And I think even Arthas has uh, fire damage as well. Yeah, so tier 6, get in the arena, get a pair of these Elemental Boots, super nice for mages. In the chest slot, a couple of options. The High Draconian Robe isn't that bad actually. Heavily balanced towards defense, which we're kind of missing at this tier actually for mages. So if you get a nice legendary or ornate from a High Draconian Mage, you know, they're quite common. So good chance to pick one of these up. Very good option. Otherwise, Wyvern Robe or Moon Robe from Titan, both good options. The Wyvern Robe does come with the innate Dragon Resistance. Pretty nice to get it at this point in the game, I think. And again, the materials are very easy to upgrade a few levels. In the mage head slot, a lot of these items are limited event raids. But down at the bottom here, there's a trio of uh, witch hats, which are really nice, actually. Obviously, you've got the moon hat from Titan, which is very solid. But also the normal Carmen boss drops a really nice hat. Very balanced defensive stats. Uh, so I try and go with one of these two if you can. This runic hat actually drops from a world raid boss, the Fey Gazer. It might take you a while to take one down and you know it's quite rare to see them but it does reduce the mana cost of your spells the stats aren't too bad um, but most likely you're going to find a nice witch's hat or moon hat over the runic one finally at tier 6 we have another upgrade to our offhand scroll i should probably say side grade same magic stat we lose the 80 base mana from the sorcerer scroll and instead you gain the chance to cause burning frozen paralyzed and rot but looking at the materials required to upgrade it may be easier to stick with the tier 5 sorcerer scroll if you want more survivability there's a couple of nice shields also giving you ward but uh, my personal preference is always to go full magic so in summary, at tier 6, we have some really nice mage boots available to us from the arena. Try and find a good pair of each element that will give you maximum flexibility in your gearing options. Ancient Trolls charms are quite nice from dungeons. And then obviously you've got the Witch's Arc Staff from the Carmen of the Underworld boss, which again only appears in dungeons. Otherwise, raiding Titan for his moon gear. Also, don't forget the High Draconian Mages. Their gear is more balanced towards defense over resistance. But overall, we've got nice options at this tier. And moving on to tier 7 weapons, you're definitely going to be wanting to join a kingdom by now if you haven't done so already. Baylor Elite Raid is super good. It drops the Ashen Staff, which has the highest magic at this tier, regardless of any limited event items as well. This scales really well. It can even last you into tier 9 if you get a nice ornate one. We then have another really good option from one of the dragon bosses at this tier. Typhon drops a really nice staff, just a little less magic than Baylor Elite. And remember Typhon only appears in dungeons, whereas Tiamat also appears in the wild, so you might find Tiamat staff a bit easier than a Typhon staff. So ideally you find a Typhon staff over a Tiamat one, but realistically they can both do the job pretty well. You may also find a Spelunking staff in dungeons from a Cave Lord. Slightly less magic, but it can still do a decent job for you. Accessory wise at this tier, we're mainly going to be holding on to our Ancient Trolls charm carried over from tier 6. I hope you found a nice one by now. But especially for PvP, Anku's Ring prevents Sleep and Curse, so it pairs very well with the Mimic's Mischief skill. And the Ring of Anwen is a very vital pickup as well from Fallen Ra in dungeons. If you're going up in PvP against an opponent with Gracia Yokai, Ring of Anwen is probably your number one choice. In the head slot, the Ashen Hat from Baylor Elite isn't that bad, but there is a really nice helm available from the arena at tier 7 and that is the Great Antlers. You get lots of adornment slots, you get balanced defense and resistance, and they're both pretty high at this level. It's very easy to acquire materials to upgrade it, and you know at this point in the game you're definitely going to start wanting to upgrade things to level 8, 9, and 10 in the blacksmith. And if you're taking things particularly slow and steady, you might even start master forging, and if you master forge a set of Great Antlers, you'll have even more slots for adornment. I'll quickly mention the High Fomorian Hood as well. It's going to be a very common piece, good chance you'll find an ornate one. It's got very high base resistance, easy to upgrade again, nice situational pickup for sure. Quickly mention World Raid boss gear as well. Fade Dragon Hood is actually very nice from the Fade Dragon, increases your pet action rate by a couple of percentage points. Fairly decent stats as well and some dexterity. First Horseman's Hood on the other hand, yes it has balanced stats but they're less than the Great Antlers obviously. The ultimate attack damage reduction from raid bosses isn't really very significant with only one piece and it does require fairly rare materials to upgrade as well so I don't really recommend any of the First Horsemen or indeed any of the Horseman gear really as opposed to other items at this tier. Now for the chest piece of course you have your Ashen 
robe and the uh, Hypermore in robe available from your regular sources. There is also the Reaper's robe available from Anku which will increase your Orns. So if you get a Legendary or Ornate, obviously take this up to level 10 because you're going to be using this for world farming and uh, dungeons as well. This will last you a very long time. However, tier 7 chest piece can only mean the Yeti overcoat. Yes, you will have to search long and hard in snow biomes to even find a great Yeti but it's so worth it. Very high balance resistance and defense. A little bit of HP, water resistance, protection from freezing. What more could you want? Good luck. In the leg slot, you've really got two options between the Ashen Boots from Baylor Elite and uh, Fade Dragon Major Boots as well, not too bad. Whichever one you can find. On the Baylor Elite side, I recommend using all your Baylor right to hopefully upgrade a nice ornate Ashen Staff if you find one. Definitely prioritize upgrading your weapon first. I guess out of all the armor slots, the boots are the best choice for First Horseman from the World Raid boss if you find a decent set. Maybe just taking it up a couple of levels can uh, help you out for a little while as well. And finally at tier 7 for the offhand, the only non-limited time event item available is actually this Arch Rune Shield which offers a little bit of ward and a little bit of resistance. I would recommend taking your Arcane Scroll or previous Sorcerer Scrolls up a little bit higher. If you can hold out to tier 8 you get a nice Dragon Scroll from Fafnir, that's going to be our next main upgrade in the offhand slot. So in summary at tier 7 our main gear upgrades actually come from our weapon of course, the chest slot is going to be nice to focus on and then if you can get a nice pair of great antlers from the arena that will really round out your stats nicely as arch druid at tier 7. Okay moving on to tier 8 weapons. It's a little bit of a strange one at this tier in my opinion. There's a lot of time limited event weapons which are fairly decent but even then there's not actually much of a jump up from tier 7. So the dragon boss weapons and the Baylor elite staff are still very relevant at this tier. First weapon we can mention is this horror staff from Cthulhu boss. We can see the base is only 12 magic above the Baylor elite staff and you do get the lucky bonus as well. And next to that we have something which is actually quite interesting. The Grio Arvolor. It has inherent heretic jewels causing temporary res down and res double down as well. Which is very nice, available from the arena so it might be quite difficult to find a nice one. But if you do it can be a decent option, would be good for raiding. And also from the arena you have the Waz staff which actually gives you the highest magic available I think in the core game at this tier. I'm not sure about the scaling, again coming from the arena it will be fairly difficult to get a decent one. But if you do, the Waz can be good. And finally, for the Kingdom Raid of this tier, Fallen King Arthas drops the Vrangomiant, which again isn't much of an upgrade from the Baylor staff. And yeah, by this point you'll likely have a lot of materials built up from raiding Baylor Elite, allowing you to upgrade the staff more easily. However, if you are raiding King Arthas quite regularly and you do find a Vrangomiant, it's still a very good weapon at this tier. Finally, we can mention the Second Horseman staff, again from the Second Horseman, the World Raid boss. The base magic of 217 blows anything else out of the water at this tier in the core game. The only thing about it is going to be very difficult to find a good one. World Raid bosses are hard to come by, however if you do get lucky, be prepared to cough up some fairly hard to come by materials to upgrade this. Now moving on to accessories at tier 8, we have the Fafnir boss which drops the cursed monster tombs and the, the cursed rings as well. Finally an upgrade to a magic accessory. It's really around this point in the game where leveling starts to slow down and you're going to be wanting to think about equipping some cursed monster tombs. We should be able to deal with the lower stats quite easily as necromancer and I really like cursed rings for pvp, equipping a couple of these and uh, blasting our opponents in the face with summon dead. Yeah, it's very satisfying. If you're traveling around, beware the midnight eye gives increased view distance. It's very useful for hopping into dungeons, which you'll want to be doing at tier 8 for sure. So moving on to leg slot, there's a common theme at this tier. In all three armor slots, there's generally going to be three main options depending on what you can find. That is the cursed gear from the arena, king's boots from the fallen king Arthas raid, and then you have Northrin shoes which come from the Northrin warlocks which you'll definitely be killing at this tier for their super rewards. So if you're a fan of killing mobs you'll likely come across a decent pair of Northrin shoes and they'll definitely have a lot of materials to upgrade it all the way to probably Master Forge, even Demon Forge as well. And these give you nice defense which is very good for going into tier 9 against Apollyon. Hits really hard with attack. So remember I think the game really rewards flexibility in gearing options and, and having a pair of each of these available to you will definitely make you more adaptable to the required situation. And we have a very similar situation in the head slot as well. You do have higher stats with the cursed hood from the arena as opposed to the king's hood and the northern hood as I said before with the legs. Try and get a set of each and we'll also mention the lost helmet for world farm increases the orns gained which by this point you realize the northerns give a lot of orns pairing it with your reaper's robe 
and then going into tier 9 with Band of Gods, I definitely recommend leveling up uh, a Legendary or Ornate if you can find one of these. And for the chest slot, the exact same applies as to what I've just mentioned. However, we do have another option available with regards to the Cockmail, solid defense, and unlike the Curse Pro, doesn't drop our magic stat at all does also offer immunity to petrification which is obviously going to be useful for doing boss dungeons as well as certain higher tier world raid bosses and finally for tier 8 we're going to talk about the offhand the dragon scroll that drops from fafnir we're going to be sacrificing ward but a good dragon scroll is really nice for world farming blasting mobs in one hit for survivability and maybe lasting longer in raids a nice arisen bone shield is a good option offering decent health defense and ward so in summary at tier 8 you're going to find experience curve really starting to steepen and we're definitely going to want to be killing Fafnir bosses for his tomb, his curse ring and his dragon scroll. Armor pieces are definitely dominated by Nothrin Warlocks, Fallen King Arthas and Cursed Gear from the arena. Mixing and matching is definitely a very good option depending on what you can find. Topping it off with a decent cockmail will be very useful for going into tier 9 as well. Weapon wise it might be a bit of a struggle to actually get a solid upgrade from tier 7 so remember the dragon boss weapons are still very viable. Tiamat and Typhon Staff as well as the Ashen Staff from Baylor Elite Raid. There's going to be a very big jump going into tier 9 with the Fallen God weapon. Speaking of which we can look at the Demetrius Staff at tier 9. We can see it has a base magic of 250 which is just huge. The Demetrius Staff will also give you a lot of mana and can also cause rot being from the earth faction. My personal favorite god weapon at this tier is the Ithra Staff. The same base magic a lot of dexterity making the Omnimancer class quite dodgy and also causes Frozen as it is from the Frozen Guard faction. Finally we can see the Vulcan's Archistaff also has a base magic of 250, doesn't have any additional stats but it does cause burning. Also I forgot about the Thor's Ark which has the same base magic dropping from Fallen Thor but this is a great bow and the Omnimancer doesn't have a weapon bonus with great bows which is why we concentrate on the, the three previously mentioned god weapons. So yeah my personal favorite is Ithra but of course RNG is RNG definitely boost up the highest one you can. Boss dungeons at tier 9 are very important to pick one of these up. I will mention of course the Arisen Witch's Staff as well which is like the mage's equivalent to the Venin and is an upgrade to the weapons from Carmen and Carmen of the Underworld which give increased experience earned. Unfortunately being dropped by Arisen Carmen which is an Arisen mob the drop rate is quite horrendous on these and uh, I didn't find an ornate Arisen Witch's Staff till I was level 235 I think. I wish you better luck than me. Bear in mind even a legendary is still going to get you a lot of work done a lot of increased experience and if you level it to Master Forge it's going to give you the same experience gain as a Master Forge ornate quality weapon as well. You should still be killing things just fine with the legendary. Other weapons to mention at tier 9, the imagination dropping from Mighty Mimics is very very interesting. I wish the magic stat was a little bit higher because it doesn't have boss scaling but the supplementary effects are very nice. Also gives you the Berserk 2 for free. The Apollyon weapon, the Incarnate Archistaff, is very defensive uh, in comparison to the god weapons. You do get a decent amount of ward, a little bit of mana, a bit of dexterity as well. Is lacking in firepower compared to the god weapons and it's the same kind of thing with the Kaladanda uh, dropping from Mammon. Same magic from the poly weapon looks a bit barren here but it does actually have plenty of adornment slots which can be useful i would say it's not as good an option as the arisen kaladanda in tier 10 though so for accessories at tier 9 we of course have to mention the band of gods this comes from the main storyline quest get it as soon as you can it increases your orns and experience and gold gain by 50 percent and completing the quest will allow you the opportunity to get one at the end of completed dungeons and uh, gauntlets this is really what makes the orns flow this is definitely going to be your main world farm accessory. I also want to mention the briny pendant dropping from the kraken boss. It's a very solid accessory, protects you from blight, poison, rot and toxic as well. Very useful piece to have in lots of situations. The other accessories here, the crimson eye, uh, immortal's ring, azure crystal, they're all quite interesting. They all offer fairly decent stat increases but I think at this point you're either going to have your band of gods and experienced tombs equipped or you're going to have immunity gear like the briny pendant or anku's ring, steady pendant etc those kind of things. Ring of day, ring of night. You know those immunity pieces are really irreplaceable by stat pieces. If someone drops your resistance in half, 100 res isn't going to make up for that. Moving on to armor and legs, I really want to recommend the incarnate boots from Apollyon. Really at tier 9 and especially for mages we're going to start focusing on acquiring some nice ward gear. Due to the Omnimancer class and especially the heretic class at tier 10, we have high base HP, we have high base mana. That gives us a lot of base ward to build off and nothing does that better than Apollyon gear. So yeah, I definitely recommend joining a decent kingdom that's raiding Polyon fairly regularly. 
try and get a good incarnate set of gear. If you're only dropping legendary incarnate gear, I still recommend smithing it up to level 10. Again, for the chest piece, the incarnate robe is uh, very solid from Polyon. But we do have a nice other option available via a world raid boss in the Fey Yeti coat. This is like the final form of the, the Yeti fur coat. Again, you have balanced defense and resistance, high HP, high mana. Water resistance, of course, also prevents single downs of resistance and defense. And you get a decent amount of ward as well. Not as high as the Polyon gear, but it's still there. For the head slot, of course, we have the Incarnate Hood from Polyon. I'll reiterate the fact that even legendary Polyon gear is very useful going into tier 10. All different pieces of ward gear multiplied together. And don't forget, they also increase your magic stat quite significantly. One really nice piece of gear this tier is actually the Arisen Witch's Hat. You have high stats, which are balanced, and you also get Dexterity as well. So back in the day, this was a really coveted piece of gear. Obviously you now have a lot of event gear which is kind of better. And by the way, the Baylor crown dropping from the Baylor king at this tier is uh, is just trash. Finally, in our offhand at tier 9, we can still recommend the Dragon Scroll from tier 8, Fafnir. You'll have more time to pick up a nice one. It will still offer you the highest magic available in your offhand. However, you will definitely want to pick up a nice Fallen Shield from Mammon Boss. It gives you immunity to curse, which is very nice. Very high base ward, a few other small stats. Also try and find a good Mighty Griffin Shield. The Dragon Resistance is going to be important for raiding Morrigan at tier 10. And finally I want to mention the Mammon Sword which was recently buffed. Now has 3 adornment slots, added view distance, a little bit of ward, nice base stats and it gives you and gives you temp magic up. So this is definitely going to be nice for farming and uh, honestly might even replace your Dragon Scroll because it doesn't gut your ward by 50% and should make those boss dungeons even smoother. So in summary, at tier 9, try and complete the story quest as soon as possible. Pick up the Band of Gods, pick up the Mammon Sword, pick up your second Band of Gods from completing dungeons where you'll also be finding your god weapons. Try and get lucky with the Arisen Witch's Staff. That will make our experience gain from world farming a little bit faster. And then Armor Wives are really going to be focusing on Polyon, I'm afraid. It's a bit boring. Remember, he does hit hard with attack damage, which is why Northern Gear is very good against him from tier 8 starting off in tier 9. From World Raid Bosses, the Fey Yeti drops a really nice coat, but remember, he doesn't always drop it. Okay, we've made it to tier 10 and guess what? The best gear currently drops from raids. The Morrigan drops two types of gear. You have the Fey Maca Pillar here, which is the highest base magic stat weapon in the core game. And then you have the non Fey version of it, the Maca Pillar, which is a little bit lower, but I think technically is easier to get in my experience. Non Fey gear does drop from Morrigan on a more regular basis. So you can see the Maca Pillar has a base magic of 310. The Fey version has a base magic of 342. This thing is a beast. It also comes with ward as well. This negative ward does go positive once you've leveled it up. And being heretic, we're not worried about the negative health and mana. In fact, the negative mana is very good for us. So disregarding Arisen Morrigan, which is the current limited event raid boss. I hope Odie makes that a permanent world raid boss, by the way. We'll find out in about a month's time. But Fey Maca Pillar is definitely your end game, end game weapon. It is rare to get. Let's talk about other tier 10 weapons. Uh, we've got Dynasty here, actually, immediately in our face. This drops from the Anubis boss, which is quite common in uh, boss dungeons and out in the world. You can see its base magic is unfortunately very low, in my opinion. It does cause bleeding which is quite nice i just wish this base magic was a little bit higher it's still quite a solid uh, tier 10 starter weapon it is higher than the tier 9 god weapon we then have the arisen dragon staffs tiamat and typhon again arisen typhon staff does offer higher magic and uh, presumably this is only available in dungeons i do also love the fact that these cause blight uh, rip fishing you then have the arisen god weapons base magic around 290 actually i think arisen demeter's staff has a higher base than the vulcan and ithra you have a higher base here with arisen demeter and uh, a lot of mana as well but actually with the arisen weapons my favorite is going to be the kaladanda dropping from the arisen mammon only available in dungeons remember it now has a higher base magic than the Fallen God weapons and has a shitload of adornment slots. I think it has 8 or 9 adornment slots at Master Forge. So bear in mind it's not that difficult to get adornments which give you, you know, 15 magic and above. So a fully stacked one of these is giving you over 1600 magic quite easily, which is pretty solid. Obviously the Arisen God weapons and the Arisen Mammon weapons are very rare. You have a chance for one Arisen God to appear in the final floor of Gauntlets and Dungeons and then you pray for the Ornate Drop, so it's a long term goal for sure. Arisen Fae Maca Pillar. Two Arisen Fae Maca Pillars. That's the dream. That's the Sequencer dream. Okay, moving on to accessories and at tier 10 we have Arisen Fafnir being our bane of the existence again. Arisen Monster Tomb. The common quality of these gives you way more experience than an Ornate Curse Monster Tomb. It does wreck your stats, but as a heretic you can take that on the chin fairly easily. Getting a nice set of Arisen Rings is also going to be a long-term goal to really boost our magic as high as humanly possible. When it comes to the armor, especially the chest and leg slots, 
honestly the tier 10 options that come from the world and not from raids just aren't very good at all. You're better off sticking to polyon gear and then transitioning into Morrigan gear which gives you incredibly high stats. You have the Banshee boots coming from Morrigan which gives you nice res. But again we're really gunning for the Fey armor pieces, uh, the Fey Banshee set. Randomly the Fey chest gives ward but nothing else does. Still we get reduced mana which we can take very well as heretic and super high stats as well. There's really nothing equivalent. Fortunately in the head slot we have some more options. Banshee Veil and uh, Fey Banshee Veil give you the highest stats. However, something that's going to be much more easily available is the Lioness Crown from King Gradlin, giving you pretty nice balanced stats and a lot of adornment slots. However, I'd honestly recommend the base Old Northern Crown purely on the fact that it gives you ward and even more adornment slots which you can then increase your ward further. Having good ward is going to make your life a lot easier going deep into the Morgan. In our offhand, it might take a while to get any upgrades from uh, Fallen Shield and uh, Dragon Scroll. The Arisen Mammon does of course drop the Arisen Shield which is super nice granting you curse immunity and very high reward. For maximum magic in the offhand we're looking at the Morgan scroll but again that's going to be quite a rare drop also destroys reward. In the arena you can find the Fey scroll which is supposed to be the magic version of the Fey arrows and um, yeah 96 attack 256 magic I think that's a discussion for another time. So in summary at tier 10 we have access to super magic powerful weapons, incredibly super buffed items from the Morgan, long term chase items from Arisen Fafnir, and the tier 10 crowns are very solid as well. Weapon wise at the time of speaking Sequencer hasn't yet been buffed but we're pretty sure dual wielding buffs are still on the way so it might seem difficult finding just one major weapon at tier 10 but, but obviously the longer you play you're very likely to pick up a second good weapon as well and I'm very excited for dual wielding magic builds in the future and now that we've covered the main mage item progression we can talk about adornments. Throughout much of the early to mid game, please feel free to stick random adornments in all of your gear slots. A few extra defensive stats and a few extra bits of magic here and there. It's not a big deal at all and every little helps. A lot of those items are going to be temporary pieces of gear. The gold cost is negligible. Something like this Jewel of Erosion gives you minimum magic increase but does drop temporary resistance. And even at tier 5, the Star Lord Raid Jewel only gives you 6 magic. So in my opinion these are very indispensable, definitely fill your sunstaff with these. Our main sort of important jewel comes at tier 7 and that is in the form of the heretics jewel. These drop from all sorts of mimics and often as quest rewards. These are huge for raiding and honestly as long as you're playing the game fairly regularly you're going to come across a lot of these. So at tier 7 and tier 8 I definitely recommend sticking 2 or 3 of these in your highest magic weapon. Ideally Ashen Staff from Bay the Elite or the Fallen King Arthur's weapon. But the Staff of Typhon and Staff of Tiamat, if you get ornate versions of those, very good options for Heretic's Jewels as well. From tier 8 we start finding very useful jewels from raids. The Jewel of Avalon dropping from Fallen King Arthur's. The common quality will give you 1% ward, but anything superior and above will give you 2% ward. So keep a few of these if you like going tanky, and uh, you might stick a few of them in your Incarnate Arty Staff from Polyon. A little bit of magic as well. They're very very similar to Mammon's teardrops, dropping from Mammon bosses in the world, but the teardrops can reduce your opponent's attack and magic temporarily. So I would say this is a very PvP focused jewel. The Arisen version of the teardrop is quite similar, except the temporary attack and magic debuffs are very severe. But probably my favourite adornment for magic users is the Azure Opinion, dropping from the Fey Cockatrice World Raid boss. In the later parts of the game you'll know about the mana issues Heretic has in particular. The Azure Opinions allow you to build a very offensively focused mage using your armor slots as opposed to using jewels of the end that drop from Apollyon which are very defensively focused giving you increased ward, HP and mana and defense. Again being flexible is very important and depending on what you want to do will decide on what adornments you want to use. Finally at tier 10 Eye of the Morgan getting high quality versions of these will offer you the maximum magic available from your weapon. However do remember if you're playing the game quite a lot it's quite easy to get decent jewels from the end of uh, dungeons. It can definitely be a pain in the arse sorting through your random sets of adornments but there might be a few gems in there which give you high magic above 15, 16, going up to 20 I think is the highest. Slotting a bunch of those in your weapon can really help you boost your magic and it's not gated behind kingdom raids either. So that's it folks, that concludes part 2 of our beginner guide series for mage class progression in Orna. We've covered all the item slot options from tiers 1 to 10. Be sure to check out the link in the description below for the written guide version with all the screenshots. I really hope you enjoyed watching and learned something useful from this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. I'm Shabash, the like button for more Orna content coming soon. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one, ciao.